Hello you lovely lot, my name is Max and welcome back to my YouTube channel and another Nottingham Forest video. Yes, we are back with another tactics and transfers video where we're going to be talking about that attacking midfield position made so important by Philip Zinconago last season during our promotion campaign to the Premier League. I've highlighted three players to talk about, two of which are pretty heavily linked to the club, one of which is a tasty little wild card who I think could successfully replace the Dane in that position for the season upcoming in the Premier League. As always, my source is our FB ref who scored and the amazing summer recruitment plan done by Liam Henshaw over on Twitter for which I will leave a link to in the description of this video. Of all that out of the way, let's get into this video and start talking about that attacking midfield position. Oh and of course as always if you are new around here don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe whilst you are down there. It will be greatly appreciated we're getting pretty close to 7 100 subscribers hopefully we can hit 750 by the time the new season starts so if you're new around here drop a like subscribe and let's get into it and start talking tactics and transfers so with Watford relegated from the Premier League I wouldn't be surprised if new Hornets coach Rob Edwards looked to get Philip Zinconagel back and involved with the Watford squad next season I think he'll really benefit from the character and the work rate of the Dane in his squad as they look to push towards promotion and return to the Premier League at the first time of asking so we need to recruit someone who can play in that attacking midfield position, preferably someone who operates predominantly through the centre as that is really where we need that person to be operating, but can also go out into the wide areas, into the channels and cause some problems. And also, I personally as a little caveat would like someone who's a little bit more positionally flexible than Zinc and Arbol, someone who can play both sides, someone who can play maybe in a bit of a deeper position or even as a centre forward should we need them to in the future. That was just a personal caveat, I think those kinds of players are gold dust especially in the Premier League when you are playing quite a lot of fixtures in quite a condensed period of time. So with those requirements out of the way let's talk a little bit about the position itself and the importance of Philip Zinconogel for Nottingham Forest in our promotion campaign last season. Last season Zinconogel registered seven goals and seven assists in 47 appearances in all competitions for the Reds proven to be an important cog in our promotion push registering over 3,000 minutes in all competitions and helping us back into the Premier League this season. His defensive work rate was definitely the most lauded part of his game last season. He attempted the second most tackles of players to have played over a thousand minutes for Forest last season at around 3.7 per 90 minutes, although he did only succeed with this around 50% of the time. He also ranked 11th in the championship last season for pressures per 90 with 23 per match. For me, this suggests that he is a really good presser and a really active presser, but isn't the most smart presser and isn't always the most efficient with his pressing. So this could be an area for us to improve in. And of course, as an attacker, his attacking numbers were still pretty solid around one and a half dribbles per 90, but he was only creating less than a chance per 90. And I definitely think this is the area of the position where we really need to improve. We need someone who's going to have that work rate that, of course, Philip Zinconogel brought to the squad, but also somebody who actually in the final third can actually do a little bit more damage than Zinconogel could do. And I definitely think his uh, lack of consistency over games as well was another big issue for the day and why I'm not too surprised we're not looking at bringing him in full-time next season. So the next job to do is to talk a little bit about the position in a little bit more detail. To do that, we're going to be using that tactics board we used the last episode. So let's switch into that and talk a bit about that attacking midfield number 10 position for Nottingham Forest. Okay then, so here is our tactics board. We're going to be talking a bit about that number 10 position for Nottingham Forest. As you can see, Philip thinking all there highlighted in red. He is the player we're talking about today. Forest's formation was usually a 3-5-2 last season, although it could sometimes Times line up as a 3 4 3 with Zinconago playing more off the left. More often than not, though, he was playing as a number 10 in this formation. And I definitely believe, and I think the consensus for most Forest fans was that he was doing his best work in this sort of central area of the pitch, attacking into the half space and predominantly within the width of the goal. So going forward, he was very comfortable, particularly when we were caught out of possession and we were forcing our defenders back into a defensive position. He could adopt that sort of left-hand side position and then drive forward into the box with these sort of runs inside the field. He would then be able to lay the ball inside to someone like Johnson. He could work it down and make a ball into the box like this. Or, of course, he could show his good goal scoring ability, his pretty decent ability from outside the box as well, and find the back of the net. It was defensively, I would argue, he was doing some of his best work for Forrest. He was very happy to drop in between the lines into that midfield three and uh, help chip in a little bit defensively. He was completing, I think, around 1.2 tackles 
per match last season, ranking him pretty highly in the Forest squad. And of course, his main attribute was when we were picking up the ball uh, from deep, being able to drive into the final third and help create chances and potentially score goals as well. Sinkenogle's intensity and his pressing ability was really what set the tempo for Forest last season. If the ball was being played around the defensive half, uh, he was very able to come between the split strikers and if the defense were playing around the back he was very comfortable playing almost between the strikers we saw this uh during our fa cup run in the leicester match he was really really good at just picking up that position in between the strikers and looking to pick off passes and he was very very efficient at doing this he was less of a get in behind the back line kind of player very much more likes to pick the ball up on the half turn turn and look for a creative pass maybe carry a bit into the right channel or into the left channel and look to sort of spread play wide did a lot of good work around the edge of the box as well good little one twos good bit of movement really good at getting down to the byline which was a really good attribute of forest's game last season and put it into the box obviously for players to finish off at the back post in general his creative work he was a very busy player in and around the 18 yard box and in the final third in general and i definitely think he did his best work in a central area and possibly could get a bit lost in the game if he was forced to be a bit touchline tight as he's the kind of player who wants the ball into feet rather than sort of running onto a sort of a long ball over the top or running into the channels when the ball's played out by the center backs which again was something we would do quite often so with that little bit out of the way let's talk a bit about the players i have designated in those recruitment positions for nottingham forest to look at this summer two of which have been pretty heavily linked to the club over the course of the summer transfer window and one of them is very much a wild card you'll see him a bit later on i would definitely say a massive wild card pretty unlikely but definitely someone who offers something a little bit different to the other two options as we did in the last video, we will be talking about the player most linked to us in that position in the press at the moment, and that player is Morgan Gibbs-White from Wolves. The 21-year-old England youth international spent last season on loan at Sheffield United, in which the club reached the playoffs, obviously famously losing to us in that playoff penalty shootout at the city ground. And he's coming off the back of his most productive season to date, registering 9 goals and 11 assists for the Blades last season, playing as an attacking midfielder or as part of a front two. He played predominantly as a number 10, slightly drifting off the right-hand side of an orthodox number 9, but he also did spend large swathes of the latter half of the season playing as, I guess you'd call it a number 9, but very much a wide number 10. We saw that in the playoff matches. Obviously, the injuries to the likes of Ollie McBurney, Billy Sharp, Rian Brewster led to him and Illiman and G playing as basically split strikers, and it seemed to work pretty well. He was fairly quiet in the first leg, but in the second leg, definitely grew into the game as it progressed. His Attacking stats are definitely where he thrives the most, taking a similar amount of shots per 90 minutes as Philip Zinkenagel. Despite this, his expected goals and his goals per 90 minutes are substantially higher than the Danish international, suggesting that he's getting his shots off from better areas and has a better conversion rate than Philip Zinkenagel. He is substantially less active defensively than Philip Zinkenagel, particularly in the final third, only attempting around three and a half defensive actions per match compared to the eight, the monstrous eight, from Philip Zinkenagel. Despite this, he is much more efficient. His success rate in defensive duels is a little bit higher than Philip Zinkenagel. And he does also attempt a similar amount of interceptions compared to the Danes. So he does line up fairly similarly, but not quite to the extreme standards that Zinkenagel is putting up this season. Finally, he's really good at operating on the right-hand side of that pitch in the area in which Forrest are probably at their best and the most dominant. I've always thought his style was a little bit closer to Brennan Johnson than to Philip Zinkenagel, but I don't think that's necessarily an issue. I think that just shows that he could flexibly play either on the right if we were going for more of a throw and free, he could play at number 10, or he could play in a deeper position, although I do think this is where he's slightly weaker. I think the further of the pitch he is, is where he's the most involved and also his most dangerous. Overall, Gibbs White is a very proven attacking threat, having had two very lucrative moves in the championship over his Wolves career, including one a couple of years back at Swansea City under Steve Cooper. So he knows the coach, and the coach knows exactly what he can get out of the player. For me, the only issues surrounding this are potentially the fee, upwards of around £25 million, a club record fee, and a fee that would see the majority, I would suggest, of our transfer budget being consumed by one player. His Premier League quality is also coming to question. He hasn't had a lot of opportunities at Wolves, hasn't got a lot of Premier League minutes, so that could also be a potential issue. 
And finally, he doesn't really do fully the defensive work that Philip Zinconagel does. And I think if we're playing in the system we have, we do need that quite busy number 10 to be doing a little bit more defensive work than uh, the other forwards. And that could potentially be something we have to sacrifice if we bring in Gibbs White in the summer. Uh, the second player I wanted to talk about was Blackburn midfielder Joe Rothwell. A rumour that's got a bit quiet over the last week or so, but definitely a deal that could still be done and something of a bit of an alternative to Gibbs White or really anything we have in the Forest squad at the moment. The 27 year old got three goals and 10 assists in the championship last season, registering 3,000 minutes for Blackburn, the fourth most in their squad. He does a huge amount of creative work for this Blackburn side at the moment, creating around two chances per 90 and attempting 2.1 dribbles per 90 as well, with a 66% rate for the latter and registering top of the Blackburn squad for the former. He's actually a pretty tall guy despite his pretty mazy runs that he goes on at over six foot tall and incredibly good at any kind of deep progression sort of metric, ranking in the top 2% of championship players last season for progressive carries. These are carries over a distance of 10 yards or the end of the box. And watching his highlights on YouTube and from the games I've seen him play this season, you can really see that. He's a bit gangly, could look a bit awkward on the ball, but he's very tidy in possession, knows when to make the right pass, obviously seen for his 10 assists this season and is also just a very comfortable player on the ball very good at getting the ball forward into the final third and for a team last season uh, in Blackburn I talked a bit about more in it in their match preview that we did a couple of months back they were a very good counter-attacking side last season and his ability when picking the ball up from deep to drive them forward on the break was possibly unrivaled in the championship last season I think we're probably not going to see a lot of the ball this season in the Premier League. Having that kind of weapon in your arsenal is a very useful utility. Overall, I really like Joe Rothwell as a sign-in. I hadn't watched too much of him leading into this video, having watched some highlights and having remembered what I have seen of him in bits and parts this season. He does look like a really useful asset for the team. A competent dribbler, uh, something that we really kind of lack in the squad in numbers, and also a player with a good eye for goal, and somebody who can create a decent amount of chances for this Forest side. He looks really Really ready for the step up to the Premier League, although he's a bit on the older side at 27 years old. And being available on a free transfer this summer, it could open up the opportunity to bring in another player in that position so we can rotate between the two and obviously make the best possible lineup depending on the game. So, the final player I wanted to analyze was the wild card pick for this video. Definitely a wild card because this is. Something a little bit different and I very much doubt a player that would be within the transfer budget of Nottingham Forest this summer, but I've seen weirder deals happen and I really think that we should be pushing for this caliber of player. And that player is Yassine Adley, a 21 year old French youth international who spent last season on loan at Bordeaux from Serie A champions Milan. The press seems pretty adamant that he's going to be staying at Milan next season and being featured in their first team plans, but I definitely think if the right kind of money was offered their way and with the amount of depth they have in attacking positions at the moment, I could see them maybe turning and uh, maybe turn in a pretty decent profit on the player and let him come to the Premier League. And I definitely think if offered the opportunity to come to the Premier League, he'd potentially take that. In terms of his stats, they look pretty decent. He made 36 appearances in the French League on last season for Bordeaux, who finished rock bottom of the league, getting relegated eventually to the third tier of French football due to circumstances I will not be getting into in this video, but it seemingly rules out the possibility of you going back to them next season. Despite the poor campaign for the club, he still registered one goal and seven assists in those 36 appearances last season, 11 of which came off the bench, which is even more impressive when you're looking at it that way, and playing in a variety of positions off the left, off the right, number 10, deeper, and even as part of a front line. And that versatility, as I said in the intro, would be very important for that number 10 position. And over the last year or so, he has really been quite good for Bordeaux. Actually quite a special looking player when you look at the specific things he's very good at. Ranking particularly highly with his progressive passing in which he is in the top 3% of wingers and attacking midfielders in Europe. And also for his expected assists, 0.22 per 90 and over 4 shot creating actions per 90 as well. All of which he ranks pretty highly in Europe for that position. It is defensively where he really shines despite being more of an attacking option in that midfield his defensive stats are frightening top one percent of attacking players in europe this season for pressures at 25 
per 90 minutes, more than Philip Zinkenagel for Forest. And he does this whilst completing four tackles and interceptions per 90 minutes and seven defensive actions overall per 90 minutes. Something you would suggest would probably tick up a bit in a slightly better side considering Bordeaux finished basically rock bottom of their league last season. And from what little highlights I've been able to piece together to find on him, he looks like a really good player picking the ball up from deep, spreading it wide, dribbling forward. He's got a really good keen eye for a pass and can make that final pass in terms of goal scoring in the final third. He's also registered 15 assists in 100 league one appearances in his career so far. So I definitely think he's got the creative spark or at least he's creative enough to fill the void left by the day in this season. Overall, I really like Yassine Adley. His highlights look really, really good, albeit in a very limited amount of gameplay that I've actually been able to see from him. I'm not gonna claim I'm an expert on French football or anything. I have seen him maybe play about 15 minutes of football from some highlights, but they do look pretty good from what I've seen. And his stats do marry up pretty similarly to Philip Zinkenagel as well. That being said, he is probably going to cost us a fair chunk of cheddar if we do try and bring him in, particularly considering uh, Milan don't really look like they're in the position where they need to sell. They've just won the league. They're in the Champions League next season. They're probably going to need the depth in that position when you think about it. But I think if offered the right kind of money or the right kind of deal, there could be something to be done there. Overall, I would suggest we are probably going to be signing Morgan Gibbs White, or at least the deal is there to be done. £25 million seems like a pretty reasonable fee for a player who was very productive in the championship last season. And looking at the stats over the course of this video, I would suggest it's a pretty decent piece of business to be done. I also think that Joe Ruffwell would be a pretty decent pickup, someone who can play in a variety of positions off the left, off the right, deep or further forward. I think he would be a really good option as a free transfer. The Yassin Adley one was very much a wild card, something a little bit different. I hopefully you understand that. I'm not saying that we should definitely be signing him, but I think if those targets were missed, he'd definitely be a good option as a as sort of a third or fourth choice for that position. Of course, as always, let me know in that comment section down below who you think we should go for in that number 10 position for Forest next season. And also let me know what position you would like to see me cover next. I'm personally thinking either striker or left wing back. But of course, answers as always in that comment section down below. And if you are new around here and whilst you are down there, don't forget to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel whilst you're down there. It'll be greatly appreciated. And I'd also like to know what you would like to see me do during the off season. So again, comments below for that. With that being said though, thank you so much for watching. Enjoy your weekend Reds. I will catch you later.